Good morning. Today is Wednesday, June 3rd. My name is John Kinseth. I'm the Deputy City Manager here in the City of Decatur. As of to, uh, today, there is 197 uh, confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Macon County. Three people are currently hospitalized and we have had, had, we have had 19 deaths. Uh, as we look forward, uh, uh, we are currently under phase three. Last Friday, the, the governor moved our region from phase two to phase three, and the city has been working with our businesses to move their restaurants and their retail operations outside onto sidewalks, parking spaces, parking lots, etc. cetera. Uh, that, that will continue, and so businesses that are interested in, in moving their business outside to increase their capacity, uh, you know, certainly we are here to help you. Contact city staff, go onto our website, a lot of information on there on what you can do, what we can do to help you uh, so that we can get back to uh, some new, new normal uh, uh, and our businesses can once again thrive the way that they are accustomed to. Uh, we are uh, preparing to reopen the Civic Center. Uh, no date has been set as of yet, uh, but we are anticipating reopening the Civic Center to the public uh, sometime in the next week or two. Uh, we are making preparations to ensure that we are creating a safe environment for the public, for our employees, and for anybody that needs to come and visit the city staff uh, to do work that they otherwise can't perform online or over the phone, uh, through email, etc. Um, we certainly still encourage those methodologies. Uh, so if you uh, have a water bill that needs to be paid, if you have a building permit, still encourage you to uh, to do those things online, pay your bill online, apply for the permit, email it in. Uh, you know, we've tried to uh, increase our efficiencies and provide a 24-7 uh, city hall uh, at your fingertips through, through the website and uh, through electronic uh, methods. Um, but if, if you, that does not work for you and if you're one of the people that prefer to come in and uh, uh, do it in person, we are going to soon have that available to you. Uh, we are making modifications around the workplace here uh, to ensure that we are creating a, a safe environment. Uh, Face covering will likely be uh, required in order to enter the Civic Center and that is for all of our protection so that we can minimize any potential spread from asymptomatic carriers that otherwise don't know uh, they may potentially have uh, COVID-19. Over the past, uh, past weekend in the early part of this week, uh, we had a new situation uh, here in Decatur as, as is uh, going across our country. The death of George Floyd has certainly been a tragic loss uh, and has created a national reaction um, that we have all uh, uh, watched on national TV and as well as experienced here locally in Decatur. Uh, on Monday afternoon, uh, organizers put together a justice march uh, at the Civic Center here and around our downtown area. The city would like to thank the organizers of that event for the peaceful message that they uh, uh, conveyed to the uh, uh, participants of that march. Uh, we did something historic here in Decatur this week. As so many other communities around the country uh, uh, broke down into chaos and violence uh, uh, with looting and, and uh, extensive property damage, the city of Decatur chose to write a different history. Uh, we ultimately uh, have had uh, some, some break-in, some vandalism, um, but on a very small scale, and certainly we don't attribute that to the, the people that participated in the Peaceful March on Monday. Uh, certainly there are opportunists in, the, in our community and potentially from outside of our community um, that did uh, use Sunday night, Monday night as a, a a way to uh, essentially uh, wreak havoc on our community, um, but fortunately it was very small scale, isolated, um, and the city is here to help those businesses uh, that were impacted by this. We want to get back to normal, we want to see the plywood coming off of the, the storefronts and, and the businesses going back to business as usual, uh, because that is their livelihood and we are here to protect and to help them with that, uh, uh, that livelihood. Um, now more than ever is not the time to sow the seeds of division amongst our community. Uh, we need to come together. Um, we need to continue the dialogue about what can be done differently um, and how our uh, ordinances, how our uh, uh, police practices are impacting the minority community and the city is committed to continuing that dialogue moving forward 
uh, recognizing that it doesn't take violent uh, protests uh, uh, to really get that message across. The city has committed to continuing this dialogue. The mayor has indicated that she is willing to meet with anybody and everybody that wants to discuss what we can do uh, to, to ensure that we are providing an equitable uh, response to all people of the city of Decatur, whether they're white, black, brown, indifferent, uh, you know, all of those people are our residents. We serve you and we are committed to continuing that dialogue on how we can do better moving forward. Uh, as a reminder, today is the first citywide cleanup uh, here at the Civic Center from 2 p.m. until 6 p.m. Same rules apply as normal. You're encouraged to, to bring your garbage, uh, dispose of it. Now is the time to clean up our community um, and prepare for a, a nice summer outdoors to ensure that we are, are putting our best foot forward as the economy starts to recover. Again, as we, as we look forward, uh, we are still in a COVID-19 pandemic and we are still reeling from the uh, crisis that has been created by the death of George Floyd. Uh, we ask our residents come together, let's continue the dialogue, let's make our community a better place, a safe place for all people of the city of Decatur. And I uh, encourage you uh, to, to reach out to your elected officials as, as you feel uh, necessary. And, and share your thoughts and feedback on what we are doing as a community and how we can do better. Um, with that, I uh, hope that we all, we all do well uh, and continue to stay safe moving forward um, and uh, be well. Hi, I'm Megan and I'm the health educator at the Macon County Health Department. And today I'm going to be talking about considerations for restaurants and bars and for their employees while we are reopening during this current phase. As restaurants and bars resume operations in some areas of the United States, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, offers the following considerations for ways in which operators can protect employees, customers, and communities and help slow the spread of COVID-19. Restaurants and bars can determine in collaboration with state and local health officials whether and how to implement these considerations, making adjustments to meet the needs and circumstances of the local community. Implementation should be guided by what is feasible, practical, acceptable, and tailored to the needs of each community. These consider considerations are meant to supplement, not replace any state, local, territorial, or tribal health and safety laws, rules, and regulations with which businesses must comply. Guiding principles to keep in mind. The more an individual interacts with others and the longer that interaction, the higher the risk of COVID-19 spread. The risk of COVID-19 spread increases in a restaurant or bar setting as follows. Lowest risk, food service limited to drive-through, delivery, takeout, and curbside pickup. More risk, drive-through, delivery, takeout, and curbside pickup emphasized. On-site dining limited to outdoor seating, seating capacity reduced to allow tables to be spaced at least six feet apart, even more risk, on-site dining with both indoor and outdoor seating, seating capacity reduced to allow tables to be spaced at least six feet apart, and highest risk, on-site dining with both indoor and outdoor seating, seating capacity not reduced, and tables not spaced at least six feet apart. COVID-19 is mostly spread by respiratory droplets released when people talk, cough, or sneeze. It is thought that the virus may spread to hands from a contaminated surface and then to the nose or mouth, causing infection. Therefore, personal prevention practices such as hand washing and staying home when sick and environmental practices such as cleaning and disinfecting of high touch surfaces are important principles that are covered throughout this video. Fortunately, there are a number of actions of operators of restaurants and bars can take to help lower the risk of COVID-19 exposure and spread. Promoting behaviors that reduce the spread. Restaurants and bars may consider implementing several strategies to encourage behaviors that reduce the spread of COVID-19 among employees and customers, such as staying home when appropriate. Educate employees when they should stay home and when they can return to work. Actively encourage employees who are sick or have recently had a close contact with a person with COVID-19 to stay home. Develop policies that encourage sick employees to stay home without fear of retaliation from the workplace and ensure employees are aware of these policies. Employees should stay home if they are tested positive for or are showing COVID-19 symptoms. Employees who have recently had a close contact with a person with COVID-19 should also stay home and monitor their health. 
CDC's criteria can help inform when employees may return to work, if they have been sick with COVID-19 or if they've had a co close contact with someone who has COVID-19. Hand hygiene and respiratory etiquette. Require frequent employee hand washing, for example, before, during, and after preparing food or after touching garbage, with soap and water for at least 20 seconds and increase monitoring to ensure adherence. Encourage employees to cover coughs and sneezes with a tissue. Used tissues should be thrown in the trash and hands washed immediately with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. If soap and water are not readily available, use hand sanitizer that contains at least 60% alcohol. Cloth face coverings. Require the use of cloth face coverings among all staff as feasible. Face coverings are most essential in times when physical distancing is difficult. Information should be provided to the staff and students on proper use, removal, and washing of face coverings. And a special note, cloth face coverings should not be placed on babies and children younger than two years old, anyone who has trouble breathing or is unconscious, and anyone who is incapacitated or otherwise unable to remove the cloth face coverings without assistance. Face coverings are meant to protect other people in case the wearer is unknowingly infected and does not have symptoms. Cloth face coverings are not surgical masks, respirators, or personal protective equipment, or PPE. And adequate supplies. Ensure adequate supplies to support healthy hygiene behaviors. Supplies include soap, hand sanitizer containing at least 60% alcohol placed on every table if supplies allow, paper towels, tissues, disinfectant wipes, cloth face coverings as feasible, and no touch but pedal trash cans. Signs and messages. Post signs in highly visible locations, for example, at the entrance of bars and restaurants and in restrooms that promote everyday protective measures and describe how to stop the spread of germs, such as properly washing hands and properly wearing a cloth face covering. Include messages about behaviors that prevent the spread of COVID-19 when communicating with vendors, staff, and customers, such as on the business website, email, or on social media accounts. And you can find those free resources on the CDC page. Preparing for sick employees. Restaurants and bars may consider implementing several strategies to prepare for when someone gets sick. Advise sick employees of home isolation criteria. Communicate to sick employees that they should not return to work until they have met CDC's criteria to discontinue home isolation. Isolate and transport those who are sick. Make sure that employees know they should not come to work if they are sick and they should notify their manager or other designated COVID-19 point of contact if they have become sick with COVID-19, symptoms, test positive for COVID-19, or have been exposed to someone with COVID-19, or have been exposed to someone with COVID-19 symptoms, or a confirmed or suspected case. Immediately separate employees or customers with COVID-19 symptoms. For example, fever, cough, shortness of breath. Individuals who are sick should go home or to a healthcare facility, depending on how severe their symptoms are, and follow the CDC's guidance for caring for oneself and others who are sick. Clean and disinfect. Close off areas used by a sick person who do not use these areas and do not use these areas until after cleaning and disinfecting them. Wait at least 24 hours before cleaning and disinfecting. If 24 hours is not feasible, wait as long as possible. Ensure safe and correct use and storage of cleaning and disinfection products, including storing them securely away from children. Notify health officials and close contacts. In accordance with state and local laws, restaurants and bar operators should notify local health officials and staff immediately of any case of COVID-19 among employees while maintaining confidentiality in accordance with the Americans with Disability Act. Advise those who have had close contact with a person diagnosed with COVID-19 to stay home and self-monitor for symptoms and follow the CDC guidance if symptoms develop. Critical infrastructure workers may refer to CDC guidance for critical infrastructure workers if applicable. Thank you for doing your part and stay safe.